Okay, so ready? Mm -hmm. And I said, what was it? It's so tight. Almost 8 30. I'm going to do a mass spec. I wasn't going to do any class tomorrow, but I'm going to do one with chromatography and uh, macro molecules on Sunday. Solvent extraction and um, some module three. All right, so tonight we we'll to focus on mass spec. Specifically, how to actually interpret the data. So you have the procedure, you can just memorize, but the important part is to actually be able to analyze the data when you get it. So for example, all right, just a second. Yes. So you will typically get a chart like this. And you have the relative abundance on this side. Um, but... Right, so for the first thing, right, this mass spectrum, there are three important fragments on it that you must be able to identify. So the heaviest peak, so if you notice, right, you have the numbers on it, 15, 29, 43, 57, and 72. The heaviest one is always at the end. And that one is your molecular, molecular ion peak, all right? The tallest peak now, which is this one here. So the tallest peak, we refer to it as the base peak. And the tallest peak, it is your most stable fragment. So the base peak, it is the most stable fragment. Now, some mass spectral data, not all of them, right after the right after the molecular and peak, you will see a short line after it. So this line, right after the, after the molecular end, and you will not see a number on it. That is referred to as the M, the M plus one peak. For the molecular ion peak, that is the M plus peak, right? So remember now, an ion is formed when any species loses an electron. So if you have an atom, the atom loses an electron to get an ion. So during the process, we'll 
Or can cut the procedure. When the molecule loses an electron, that's how you get the molecular ion. So for tonight, we are focusing on this chart here and others, right? So the first thing you should be able to do is to identify your base peak that is always the tallest one. And your molecular ion peak that is the heaviest one. They ask about an M plus one peak. You look for a tiny peak just after the molecular ion. So typical questions that they can ask, all right? Apart from identifying these three peaks. All right, so those are the typical questions for you to be able to draw these fragments, 15, 29, 43, whichever fragments I get, you should be able to draw the structure for it. Right? And as well as the structure for your molecular ion. The question will have to tell you if you have a hydrocarbon, ala alkane, alcohol, carboxylic acid, iron, so you can get mass spectra, you can get it for hydrocarbons, like in this example, that's a hydrocarbon, you can get it for haloalkane, which we will do. And Esther, they can get it for any of those compounds, All right? <clears throat> so starting off now, I'm going to show you how you can do it. We can figure out these structures quickly, all right? So I'm going to start with the molecular so this is the mass spectrum of a hydrocarbon. So you will be, they will tell you which compound you are dealing with. So for this one, I am telling you that it is hydrocarbon. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to get the molecular and peak. Right. I'm going to erase the right hand side of the board, which is these questions. So you can just take a picture of it. All right. I'm going to erase it.
All right, so it says we sh if we want to find the formula for the molecular ion of a hydrocarbon, we are going to divide the mass of the molecular ion. So in our example, the mass of the molecular ion, that is 72. And you are to divide it by the mass of carbon, you know, the atomic mass is 12. So 12 divided by 72 divided by 12 is six. And then we're going to subtract one from it. So our compound is in five carbon atoms. All right. So we know that our hydrocarbon is pentane, which would be C5H12. If you check the mass of this, it should match up to 72. So we know 25 is 60, 60 and 12, that is 72. So this particular hydrocarbon, it is pentane, right? So that is what you will do. If you get a hydrocarbon and you need the formula for it, just divide by 12, then subtract one. If for some reason you get a decimal, so for example, if it was 6.7, 6.4, 6.9, ignore the decimal. So it would, in each case, your answer, you divide by 12 is six. So you're going to ignore, if in any instance you get a decimal, do not pay it any mind. All right. So that is what you would do for your molecular ion. I'll give you a minute to write and then I raise the right hand side of the board. I'm going to trace now. I can take a screenshot or a picture if necessary. I'm just erasing the right hand side.
Now, how do we find the formula of our fragments? So the 57, the 43, 29, and 15. Sir, are you speaking? Oh. Okay. All right, so if you remember with the with the molecular ion, we would divide by 12. Whatever answer we get, we subtract one from it. With the fragment, it's different. Just a little different. So let's work 57. So it would be 57 divided by 12. The answer is 4.8. And notice I said that you do not do not do not round off. So if I get 4.8, just focus on four. So the fragment that is 57 has four carbons. All right, so that would be C4. Now, get the fact to get how many hydrogens, just know that it is one less than the alkane. For example, C4, if it was an alkane, it would be C4H, and it should be one less, so C4H9. But of course, you could just say 12 times four, that is, 48, 48 from 57, that would give you nine. Some comments. So for the molecular ion, would we round off? No. The first text in, I don't use that formula. I didn't use it because this way is easy to get your answers. All right. So that would be for fragment 57. I soon tell you, I soon show you exactly why it has to be nine. All right, let me show you now. So we know that the molecule is pentane. Pentane has five carbons. So I'm going to draw the molecule of pentane down here. So five carbon, 12 hydrogens. Thank you. 
Okay. So this is pentane, right? Remember, when your molecule goes into the mass spectrometer, some of it will break up into fragments. The molecular ion means that it did not break up. So the entire pentane molecule made its way through the mass spectrometer. However, if it fragments, let's say it fragments here, you are breaking the carbon to carbon bond, right? So at no point would have the correct amount of hydrogen to make it an alkene because you are breaking the carbon to carbon bond here, it will always have one less hydrogen. So for example, if you have an alkene with three carbons, you should have eight hydrogens. Look at this here. For the first three carbons, one, two, three, it has three and two, five and two, seven hydrogen. Because this, this bond here is to a carbon. So that is the reason why you should always have one less hydrogen, all right? Because you are always breaking carbon to carbon. Mama, what did I do to you? You are very lucky I am not jealous. All right, so you can to quickly get it once it's four carbons, you just do it like the alkane, but no, it should have one less hydrogen. All right, and that's it. But I'm going to do 43 now. I'm going to erase the top right hand side of the board. All right, so to move a little quicker now, it's just 43 divided by 12. You will get three point something. Let me check, three point how much? That is 3.6. Again, you do not round off. It is three carbons. So that means this would be C3H7. Right. And these formulas will always put a positive sign on them. All right, 29. So fragment 29, it will be 29 divided by 12. You will get 2.8. Point four. So we need as two carbons. So C two H to the person on the channel is we divide by 12 because that's the mass of carbon. It's just a way of finding the formula quickly, all right? So I just figured out a way how to do it, all right? So I can't give you an exact rational, but it works, all right? And then 15 divided by 12 will get one point something. One point three. All 
All right, so it would have one carbon. So that's CH3 plus. All right, note, so to move, make things even easier now, these fragments, all right, so let me just put a note. Mary is where? Right. Let's put it here. So basically, these, hold on, let me show you the comments. Okay, okay. All right, how do I determine the number of hydrogens? All right, so for the molecular ion, right, we, we had determined that it had five carbons. Good. So if the mass of the molecular ion is 72, and it has five carbons. C5, that is a mass of 60. That means 60 from the 72 is 12. All right, let me just put the question on the board for you. Yes, a plus should be on the molecular end as well. So let me use an example to explain. So for 72, So to get the amount of hydrogens, we are always adding up the mass of the carbon atoms and then subtracting it from the number. So for example, for 15, right? If we say we have one carbon atom, one carbon atom is 12. So 12 from 15 is three. For fragment 43, if it has three carbons, 12 threes is, 36, therefore it would have seven hydrogens, which would bring it up to 43.
All right, so that is a typical mass spectrum question for a hydrocarbon. So that is what you will do for a hydrocarbon. Now I'm going to show you what to do for a halo alkane. And then I will test you with the past papers. I've shown you one for hydrocarbon. I'm going to show you one for the alkane and one for the ester, then the past papers. So I'm going to clear the entire screen now. So if you need anything, just take a screenshot. I'm going to clear the entire screen. Right, let me do it the other way around. Let's look at the structure of a compound. So, and then we're going to fill out the chart. So let us say we have chloropropane. So the mass of chloropropane, that would be chlorine is 35. We have three carbons, that's 36, and then seven hydrogen, that's a mass of 78. So the molecular mass of our compound is 78. We're not going to use the decimal in this case for chlorine. Let us say the molecule it fragments here. All right. If it fragments here, it means that we will get one fragment with C2H5, right? So if it breaks here, we get C2H5, and that is a mass of 29 would also get one with CH2 and Cl. The chlorine is 35 plus 14, that is 49. So the CH2, Cl fragment, that would be 49. Let us say it breaks. Yeah, let me do a next one. Let us say it breaks here. If it breaks here, you would get a fragment for 15 CH3. That would be all right, 15. And then for this part now, all of over here, let's add up that. The current is 35, two carbons, 24, and four hydrogen, that's 63. So C2H4Cl, that fragment would be 63. And then let us say the chlorine, the carbon to chlorine bond broke. For that, that would be 43. So that would be C3H7. That would be 43, we would have a fragment for 35, which would have been chlorine. So those are some possibilities, all right? So let's put these now on our chart. Excuse me, sir. Um, 
So the chlorine would be a fragment by itself, the chloride, sorry, chloride um. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right, so we have a fragment for 15. And right, so let's put on that. We have a next one for 29. All right. Let us say 43 is the most stable one. Let's make that the tallest peak. We have a next one for 49. Also, I have one for what? 63. All right. We have the molecular ion now, which is, could be the mass for the molecular ion peak. Anybody? If the molar mass of the compound is 78, what would be the mass of the molecular ion? 78. 78, right. Does it matter how high? No, this is just a sketch, you know. So no, it doesn't matter here, all right? So the import, the most important thing that you will have to do on the exam is to actually know how to draw these structures, all right? All right, so what I'm going to do now, I already know, I showed, I showed you the structure of the compound, right? So we know it's chloropropane. But what I'm going to do now is erase it. I'm going to erase the chloropropane, all of this, all right? But just imagine now, I had, given, I had given you this chart and told you it was a halo alkene. So now for this one, you are told it's a halo alkene. So first thing you should do is figure out the structure of the halo alkene. So first thing, the mass of bromine is 78, not 78. So fluorine is 20, let me, um, all right, so fluorine is at the number nine, it's so about 19, I think. Fluorine is 35, bromine is 80, if you average it. How do you know which one is the most stable? The tallest peak is the most stable one. So the person asking from the channel, the tallest one, that is the most stable peak. All right, so when you get an ala alkane, right, and you want to figure out the structure of the ala alkane, this is what you will do. All right, so. All right, so no, it cannot be bromine, right? Let us say, all right, in the interest of time, it is chlorine. So what you are going to do, right? You're going to subtract the mass of chlorine from 78. So you're going to say 70, so we're, so 78, take away 35, that would give you 43. The first thing I do 
if you get a hella alkane, subtract the mass. Yes, the, the recording will be on the channel once it ends. So you subtract the mass of your halogen from the mass of the molecular ion. Secondly, no. All right, someone, how do we work out the number of carbons when it's a, f when it's a, f a fragment? What should we do when it's a fragment? Right. So 43 divided by 12, we would get 3.6. So should we, should we round it off? No, just leave it at the end number. All right. So... It has three carbons, right? So we know already. So in, if you get this in under a minute, you can know the structure of your compound. So you know it has three carbons and it's chlorine. So you would know that this is the structure of your halo alkane, all right? So that is what you do to get the structure, or the molecular formula, so which would be C3H7Cl. So that's your compound. All right, that's how you would do it. So if you get a L alkane, just subtract the mass of the halogen first. Then to get the amount of carbons, you just work it like a fragment. And the reason we do it like a fragment, if you take off the halogen, what you have left is a fragment, it's not a complete alkane. So that is why we have to do it like a fragment. Because if you break, if you break the carbon to halogen bond here, what any amount of carbon remaining that is a fragment. All right, someone say how oh, we know it was CL because we were working under the assumption, but we can figure it out as well, you know. So let's say it was fluorine. Fluorine is 19. Good. So if we say 78, Take away 19. That would leave me with how much now? That would leave me with 59. All right. And then I would say 59 divided by 12. 12 5, 60. I would get five points. I would have five carbons, right? Now, what we're going to do is to see if this structure, so based on what we have, they're saying that if it was fluorine, we would have five carbons. One, two, three, four, five carbons with fluorine on it and the hydrogens. All right. Yes, sir. Yes. Um, 59 by 12 isn't 5. It's not 4.9. 1. 12, 5, 60. Oh, 12, 5 is 60. Right. So yeah. it, it is under the 5, right? Yeah. So it'll be 4. Right. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for that. Yes, sir. All right, so the question now is, can if this is the structure, right, what is going to tell us if it is correct is if this structure can match the fragments here. The 63 
and the 49, does it align with this structure? So can we get 63? All right, so look, what you will do, right? If you have 63, well, and I'm seeing some messages, it's four carbon, I believe. Yes, it's four, All right? So we have to adjust our calculations when it's the halo alkane, all right? So this is what you will do. Just like before, subtract your halogen from it, all right? So it is 63, subtract your halogen from it. Oh, I should point out, remember I gave you just before this, I told it, what did I tell you about these peaks? Did I say about 15, 29, and 43? Anybody remember? They're always hydrocarbons. Right, and the formulas are always fixed, right? So on any mass spectrum, 15 is always CH3, 29 is C2H5, this would be C3H7, all right? No, that means once you see 49, once you see anything, remember now, after 43, the next one I gave you was 57, which is C4H9. The reason why I'm telling you this, any number outside of these will have in the atom that does not make the compound a hydrocarbon, right? So the 15, the 29, 43, 57, those fragments are for hydrocarbons. So once you see 49 and 63, what would that tell you? about that particular fragment. Would, would it be a hydrocarbon fragment? No, sir. Right, so that means those fragments must have been fluorine inside of it. Assuming fluorine is the halogen. Right, so let us check this now. So, what you're going to do, write the mass of your fragment, subtract the mass of fluorine from it. 49 minus 19, that would be 30, right? Now 30 divided by 12. You would get two parts. Right, let me just do it. 30 divided by 12, you'll get 2.5, right? Which means that you must have two carbons. When you have two carbons, you must have five hydrogens, right? So C2H5, that is a must for 29, right? No, 29 and 30. Right, it does not come up to 30, it comes up to 29. Are you seeing that? So let me go again. Yes. So look, the hydrocarbon fragment, so remember, this is the halogen, fluorine. When you subtract it from the fragment for 49, you end up with 30. 30 must be hydrocarbon, all right? But when you work out the hydrocarbon fragment, you are getting 29. So that means it's not fluorine. The structure is not matching up. All right? So if fluorine cannot give you these fragments, fluorine is not the halogen. So you move on to the next halogen now, all right? So if you want to know the halogen, do not pay attention to these fragments that you already know is a hydrocarbon fragment. Try the ones that you know most of in your halogen, all right? 
So let's try it now with chlorine. So how do we know the, the number of hydrogens? I can't answer that again. All right, I will answer it later. Now the number of hydrogen just subtract. When you work out the number of carbons, you add it up and subtract it from the mass of the fragment. All right. So we know it's not fluorine, and I hope you understand why. Let's move to chlorine now. All right. For this fragment now, 49, right? 49, take away 35. That would give you 14, right? So remember the 14 here, that's your hydrocarbon fragment. 35, that is your halogen. And remember, you know, we said that this fragment must have in your halogen because it does not correspond to a hydrocarbon fragment. So you subtract the halogen from the mass of the fragment. So it's the fragment minus the halogen, you get the 14. That is for the number of carbon plus hydrogen. So 14 divided by 12, that will have one carbon. All right? One carbon as a mass of 12. So 14 take away 12, that is two hydrogens, all right? So that means it is CH2. So CH2, that's 14 plus 35, it gives you back 49. So once you can get the fragment, it means you have the halogen. If you cannot get the fragment, you have the you have the wrong halogen, all right? So that fragment is CH2Cl. In terms of the significant peaks, the, those are the ones with the numbers. So you can have other peaks in between, you know, but we are not interested in those, only the one they give you the numbers for, all right? And you will work it out. Yes, it's a, if it's a trial and error, basically, but you have to work quickly. So that is why I'm showing you all of these. So when you go on the extra, just practice it. When you're going to the exam, it shouldn't take you, it shouldn't take you a long time because I pretty the formula you just chug it in quickly. All right. So because I just seen it now, it might look like a long process, but actually it will be quicker. So as you look at the chart, you would know to ignore these. They are not going to help you. All right. You pick out these two. These are the fragments with the halogen. You just work it out and see which halogen apply. We did fluorine, it didn't work with fluorine. But we did chlorine, it worked. So we know our halogen is chlorine. All right. Let's do 60. Let's do 63 now. Sixty-three take away thirty-five. That's twenty-eight. So for the person that is asking on the channel, that is what I'm going to do now again. I am working out the number of carbon atoms for the fragment sixty-three. So the first thing I did, subtract the mass of my halogen from the mass of the fragment, and I get 28. This 28 is for carbon and hydrogen. But just like we normally do, you divide by 12. Twenty-eight 
divided by 12. You know, we are going to get two, all right? So we don't have to waste time there. So it will be two carbons, right? If you have two carbons, C2, Sixty-three, twenty-eight, seven, twelve, twenty-four. Why four carbons? Let me see. How did we get sixty-three, twenty-eight divided by twelve? That would be two. Oh, C two H four. Yeah. All right. Two carbons, four hydrogens, 28. So, with it before though, repeat. So, with it before, because the end carbon would have um, three plus the other would have two. So, how is it? Four? Right. Give me a second. Let us check and see. All right, so now it should have three carbons, right? In total, three carbons and chlorine on it, right? Sorry, no two. Hmm? Sorry, no two. Okay, I had 28 divided by 12 would give two carbons. Right. What was the question exactly? Yeah. This I'm saying this would give remember it's a fragment, you know. So the molecule it would break here. That is how you will get the two carbons with four hydrogens. So this part is 28 and the chlorine is 35, which would give you the 63. Okay. Understand now? Yes, sir. All right. Yeah, so just bear in mind that. We are breaking the 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 molecule. All right, so let me see the question. No, C two H five. It would have been if it was a hydrocarbon, as basically the chlorine has substituted a hydrogen. That is why it wouldn't be C two H five, and that is why it is not twenty nine. It is twenty eight. All right. So this fragment as in the chlorine, which substituted a hydrogen. That is why it is not the C2H5. <coughs> mm -hmm. but I'm, all right, question. No, I'm not going, I'm just going to do it. All right, no, all right. I'm going to put a little peak here, right? If I put a little peak here, what does that tell you? So one mass unit higher than the molecule. Right. And what is the name of this peak? Here. M plus one. M plus one. All right. So let us so let us la label it again. So this peak is M plus one peak. This, the molecular ion peak, it is the M plus peak, right? And this, the tallest peak, that is our yes. base peak. So what does the M plus one peak tell us? There's an isotope. Isotope is present, all right. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put the next one here, all right? And I'm going to put 65 on it. I want you to draw the structure for 65. What do you think 65 is? Is it chlorine 37? Chlorine 37, exactly. So what I'm going to tell you now, right? You see, when you get a halogen, if you see the two peaks side by side, they differ by two, it's, they are isomers, not isomers isotopes. 
So, so sir, why wouldn't it be an M plot? Which isotope did they use for the 78? Repeat. Which isotope did they use for the 78, like the molecular mass? Which isotope of chlorine? Oh, it, it would have been 35. So won't it be an M plus 2P then? The, the molecular ion peak here? Yeah, the M plus, the small peak after the 78. This. Because 35 and 37. 35 and 37? On the, the difference of two, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Sure, but could it not Wait. carbon isotope as well? Repeat. It could be carbon 30. Carbon 13. Sir, could it be like yeah. isotopes of carbon 13 instead? It wouldn't work with this one. When you, if you try to, to break it out, remember it's off by two. Yes, this sir. one, the 63 and the 65. Yes, sir. Right. It was like a one. It's like you're off by one. You could substitute the carbon 13. All right. So you're saying so you're saying it's highly unlikely for us to find two isotopes of carbon-13 in one of these, right? So are it's not, not likely, it's are not likely not, to find... You are breaking up. Uh, what I'm trying to tell you, right, for the exam, in terms of this, these questions for the ala alkane, when you get an ala alkane, if you see the two peaks, you get two peaks, Differing by a mass of two, you have a halogen. Sorry, they are isotope. So like domain BR seven. Let me not tell you because I want to ask you a question. Ask paper. So that is why I'm telling you here now. You get a halo alkane. You see that you get two peaks that differ by this mass of two. You just know it's an isotope. So 63 and 65, they are isotopes. So your structure of your compound is not going to change. All right, so 63 and 65, the structure is not going to change. Why wouldn't the structure change? Anybody? Can tell me? The electron <laughs> that is lost is negligible. So it wouldn't really affect the overall mass of the mm -hmm. compound. 63 and the 65, you know. Why, even though the mass is different, the structure would be the same. You know, the answer, you know, does not tell me already, basically. Not neutrons. Because, well, because it's the same atom. Exactly. It's isotopes. So what do we know about isotopes? They're just different mass to more. Exactly. Right, so... Because it's an isotope. So, so the, the 63, what was the structure for, for 63 again? What did we say it was? C2H4, right. So the only difference is that, my second, this chlorine is 35, and you would have the same exact structure again. Let me just draw about the structure again. So two carbons, chlorine on it. And this time, this chlorine is 37. So let us look the mass of this fragment and this fragment. We would see that this one would add up to 63 and this one add up to 65. So the structure is going to be the same. It's just that one atom is heavier the compound. All right. Understand? Yes, sir. All right. So, just, sir, question. Yeah. Uh, you have M plus over 78 and M. Go on, continue. Is it that the M plus is 78 and the M plus one is 79? No, the M won't give it and you won't get a number on it. So when you get the chart, 
you will only see this and you will only okay, see sir. that on the chart right but what i'm saying no on your chart you don't have to get so you get the charts you don't have to see this here all right but when you see there it's a sign that an isotope is present is that clear? So it won't Sorry. be on, it won't be on every chart. That is why the first one I gave you, I don't remember if, if I had put one on it, but you don't have to have it on it, right? Once it's there though, it's an indication of the SO2 being present, right? And so again, just remember, I'm telling you, if you get the halogen and you get two fragments. That differing by two, just know that it is an isomer. So don't be there trying to draw, not isomer, isotope. So don't try to figure out how to draw one structure for 63 and the next structure for 65. It never work, all right? So that is why I'm letting you know. And so I'm going to give you the past paper now. Which year was it? I think it was 2018. I look for it and put it on the board. Um, sir. Yes. Where you have C two H five, isn't it supposed to be H six? Where? Uh, of, Over out here. Side. Out here. Yeah. Yes. No. So remember, the reason why it's not C two H six is because have to remember we are doing a fragment, so. Let's say it was this, right? So H, 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 H. If the molecules break here, right? How many hydrogens in total are on this side? Five. Right, so that is why it is C2, H, five. Do not think of it like an alkane where it is. C2H6, because remember for the alkane, every carbon would have four bonds around it. But you have to remember that this one would have been attached to a carbon, not a hydrogen. And also that the bond was broken, all right? So for your fragment, it has one less hydrogen than, an, than a regular alkane. So as I said, the reason why it is not C2H6, as would the alkane be, is because this is actually a fragment and it would have been attached to a third carbon here. Is that any clearer? Yes, thank you. All right. So I'm going to clear the screen. If you need to take a picture, take a picture. Right, I'm going to clear the screen now. This question was from 2018. Give me a second.
All right, so for this one, the only fragments that were labeled was 29. So 29, 108, One ten. All right, let me remind you of the mass of the halogens. Fluorine, 19. Chlorine, 35. Uh, bromine, 79. Well, this can be 37. This can be 80, 81. Let me check for fluorine.
Remember, M plus one don't carry a number. Don't, don't say the mass and it's tiny. So that's not the M plus one peak. Yeah. So the M plus one peak is always one more than the M peak. M, M plus peak. Right. So sorry, it's not M plus one peak, right? Remember, it's always a little peak after your molecular ion. So right here. All right, so it's now 941. I'm going to give you four, yeah, four minutes and see what I can come up with. Our question, the base peak, can you find, is it the 29? Right, because it's the tallest one. Oh, it's all, because in our, oh, I see, that's it. Yeah, it's a little bit taller. All right, for this one, basically these two are M plus peak. I'm going to explain why after. But use the use the the one inch done thing, because that is what we work with the heaviest one. So just continue.
Sir, can we yes. do any more of the isotopic masses are just the average to deduce the... No, the don't average. So don't use any decimal if that's what they're asking. No, sir. Like for bromine, 79 mm -hmm. 81. Do we use like 80 or do we use either 79 or 81? E either 79 or 81. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Right. Anybody, anybody figure out which halogen it is? They're bromine. All right. Yeah, it is bromine. So can you explain why? Yeah, I'm going to give. All right, let's work it now. All right, I'm going to work it now. All right, so the two important things. So, as you know by now, right? You get the alkane. You see, differing by these two. All right, you know it's the isotopes. If it was, if you had seen just 108 or a peak for just 110. It would mean that in that compound, you only have one of the isotopes present. Now, the key, a very important thing. By the way, how much carbon is present? Two, Anybody? Two. If you notice, all of this region is empty. That indicates that no, you don't have, you don't have a lot of carbons. Because if you add like four or five carbons in the compound, you would have had fragments in the 40s or 50s or even 60s. But you notice all of here is empty and just have one at 29. That is a big indication that it's just two carbons present. I remember also on any, on any mass spectrum, once you see 29, once you see 29, what fragment is 29? C2H5. Right, C2H5. All right, so let's follow what we said, right, and work it out. So I had said when you have a halo alkane and you want the molecular formula of the compound, how would we calculate it? Yes, subtract. Subtract. What so yeah, exactly. Tell me exactly what we would subtract. Subtract the mass of the alkene, the halogen. Right. So formula of halo alkene. So let us say, all right, so let us work with the 110. So that's the mass of the compound of the halo alkene. It cannot be chlorine. I hope you can see that, right? Could it be chlorine? No, sir. No. The number is, I don't think it will be chlorine. Right. It's too large. So with just two carbons and this high number, it couldn't be chlorine. All right. But we will prove it as well. All right. So it is bromine, right? So alkane 110. The mass of the bromine is 81. So 110 minus 81, how much would we get? So exactly 29. All right. So one, so remember 110 minus 81, what we are working out is the amount of carbons. So this is the, the mass of the halogen. The 110 is the mass of the, of the molecular ion. All right. And we get 29. 29 is a carbon and hydrogen. By now we know that once it's 29, we should know that it is C2H5, right? And that means your alkane, your alkyl alkane is bromoethane. All right. So we know that our fragment is 29. No, so for part two, it said deduce given an explanation the halogen present in the compound and hence draw the displayed formula of the compound. 
All right, so you, if you had answered it, how did you arrive at your, your answer? If you want to share, how did you know it was bromo ethane? Sorry, um, just a question. Olivine is one of your atheists to get better things in his name. She's a peed. So if you use the one of your nine eight, you can speak it by the twins and nine seven. Yeah, man. Oh, all right. So if you use the one hundred and eight, which mass would you use? The so, seventy nine or the eighty one? Seventy nine, I think. Right. You would use the seventy nine, and you would get back seventy nine, because the the one hundred and eight is for the lighter isotope and the 110 is for the heavier isotope. Is that clear? Yes. All right. All right. How, all right. So look, when we look at this compound, right, we, we only have one fragment, right? which is 29. That tells us it has, this compound it consists of two carbons. Chlorine has a mass of how much? 35. So if you add a chlorine to that mass, it cannot give us 108, all right? The next halogen is bromine. Bromine has a mass of 79 and 81. When you attach that to the ethyl fragment, it gives you the 108 and 110. Hold on, some comments. All right, let me see. So why do you use the 110 instead of 108? All right, so remember, the from we started out, the peak at the end, we all, the, the molecular ion is always the one at the end the heaviest one, all right? So you use 110. However, this is an isot. We now know that this is bromine. It has mass of 79 and 81. So when you're using the 110, you have to use the heavier isotope. And the 108 is the lighter isotope. So we use the 110, that's the heaviest ion, that's the molecular ion, all right, with the heavier isotope. So question, would the structure for the 108 fragment dif be different from the 108 fragment? So you mean from the 110 fragment to? Yeah, would the, the structure of the 108 and 110 be different or the same? No, oh, the same, sir. Right. Right. So that is alkyl alkane, right? There are isotopes. Yes, there are isotopes. That is Kathleen or Caitlin? Yes, so right, there are isotopes. So that is why the structure would not change. So it's just that one atom is heavier, right? All right, now we need to do an ester, 1055. So I'm going to clear the board and we're going to do an ester. Sarah, did we give the explanation? Let that me write it. Explanation, right? Hmm? That was just the explanation, right? Once again. That was just the explanation, right? Of how we. Um, right, yes. Of however, you figured it out. No, it's how you figured it out. All right, I will tell you how I. He figured it out. So I, I just want to know like how that word is. Did you figure it out? Yes, sir. And so with this question is however you figured it out, right? All right, so let's look again. Let me just erase this. It's a one. You know, it's a halo alkene, right? 
sir. Yes. So this, what I'm doing now is how we arrived about the, it says to explain how we got the, where is it? Where's the question? Find it back. About using, giving an explanation for the halogen present. Right, so for the first thing, we know it's a halo alkane, right? With a mass over 100, all right? So it's heavy. Second thing you notice, right? How many actual fragments are there? One. One, all right. So you have a mass, right? You have an halo alkane with a mass of over 100, but you only have one fragment. Question, if this is, if we say this is the molecular ion, right? Is the 110 a fragment? Sorry, is the 108 a fragment? Fragment means when the molecule actually pick up. No, sir. Right. So the only fragment is the 29. All right. So it's an alkane, the halo alkane with a mass over 100. There is only one fragment. And it has a mass of 29. One second, let me read this. So in this structure, do we need to write this 79 and 81? No. I'm going to undo because some people did not screenshot. So there is only one fragment and it has a mass of 29. That means The halogen in the compound must have mass of comma one ten minus twenty nine, not twenty eight. 110 minus 29, no, wait, yeah, 110 minus 29, that is 81. Oh, oh yes, sir. Right. So that means the halogen in the compound must have a mass of 110 minus 29. So the, the only fragment has a mass of 29. So that means your halogen is 29 from the Mass of the molecular ion. Right, let me. Hold on. It must have a mass of or equal to. Let me put equal to. Must have a mass. equal to the difference between the molecular ion and the fragment of 29. All right, so that's all we know. It's a halo alkane, it have a mass over 100. You only have, basically step one, looking at it now, you don't have to put it, you can make it stay for your purpose. All right, so it's over 100, there's only one fragment, which is 29. You subtract this fragment from your molecular ion, you'll get your halogen. 
All right, so 110 minus 29, 81. Object in the base peak from the molecular ion. We we determine the type of halo gen by subtracting. No, don't use the base peak. This one is just coincidence. So how we normally do it, we would subtract the halo gen from the molecular ion. Okay, all right. That's what I did, and I realized that you did it the other way around here for me. So. I don't know. I just did like a trial and error with the different mass numbers. And so that's okay to just do the trial and error. Like I did 110. Mm -hmm. No, ask the question. You did 110 and? I did 110 minus 81. Mm -hmm. Trial and error with the different mass numbers. Well, just trial and error with um, that mass number. Then it just turned out to be that. So it's okay if I just do that instead of Subtracting the 29 from the 110. No, all right. So the 20, all right. So as I was saying, right? Subtracting the 29 from the 110, it's very specific to this scenario. So the reason why we did this, right? When you look at this mass, so they're asking how we know which halogen it is. When you look at this, right? These two here, they are actually molecular ions, they are not fragments, right? So these two are bromine atoms, good? The only fragment of is 29. So the only number of carbons present in a compound is two. That is why we just subtract it. That is why we are telling them that to know which halogen is present, all we had to do was subtract 29 from the molecular ion. Is that clear? Yes, sir, but I was asking if it's also acceptable for me to just the trial and error the different mass numbers to determine which halogen is it, because that's what I did to find out that is bromine 81. In this example? Yes, sir, like where you have the 110 minus 29 at the bottom. Mm -hmm. I, I, oh. Yes, so you did the, the 110 minus 81 yes, sir. To, to get 29. Yes, sir, and that's okay as well. Yeah, man, that we did not. If you look look over to the left hand corner. Oh. Yeah, that's, how, that's what we did. 110 minus 81 equal 29. Okay. So Atoms. Okay. Mm. Only fragment of is 29. All right, so I'm going so, to undo. All right, so take a screenshot of this. Then I'm going to quickly undo for the other screen so some people can get it. Question, sir, just to be clear. Yeah. yeah you, you said that we could we basically subtract the 29 from the 110 to realize that it was bromine. And in the in the chat, I asked if we could do this for everything. So you're saying that we couldn't do this for, for any other problem. It's just that it's a coincidence. That's subtracting the 29 from the... Yeah. Because we're, we're generally the base peak from the molecular peak to find what halogen it would be. Wouldn't the base peak generally the base peak don't have in the halogen? So normally what we would do a fragment that we know have in the halogen. But what, so, yeah, what if a clueless and you don't know the halogen? That's what I'm talking about. But we did that a while ago. No. Do you hear clear? Were you here earlier when we were doing chlorine? Yes, sir. I was. Right, if you, yes, so that was the easiest way I saw to help you. I don't want it to waste time trying to figure it out, right? So if you get off, what I would suggest, right? You get a halo alkane, you subtract, look for a fragment. So remember, you know, at 63, I don't remember the exact question, but look for a fragment, good? Not the 12, sorry, not the 15, not the 43, not the 29, all right? Those are hydrocarbon fragments. 
look for a fragment and anything outside of the norm for the 15, 29, 43, 57, 71. All of these are hydrocarbon fragments. 63 is not one of these. So you would so you have a fragment, right? It is 63. Could it be, could the halogen be bromine? Quickly. No. All right. Could it be iodine? No, because it's over. The, the mass of iodine over 63. So it would be between fluorine and chlorine. So you just work it out. If fluorine matches up, this fragment is fluorine. If chlorine matches, then it's chlorine. But the two of them will not give you the structure you want. Only one of them will. Understand? Yes, sir. All right. So we need to do an ester. So I need to undo this. So I'm going to, this is going to take a while. Let me worry. Just give me a minute here. I'm pressing the wrong button. Give me a minute. That's some of stuff. All right. Here we go. It what was person that was asking? This that's what that was on the screen. This is too much undo. We have I'm going to have to screenshot it from the video. All right. Because this is too much. All right. Let's do a carboxylic acid, not a carboxylic acid, an ester. All right, that was from, let me see if I remember the year of an ester. This is from, was this the ester? Yeah, I'm not sure. I think it's 2014 of an ester. All right, let's do this one. Okay. All right, so we have our usual. All right, so let me just say, I think it's 2014. It's an ester. All right, we have our usual 15, all right, 29, large peak for 43. Some other little peaks in between, those are, those are not important. And then you have, 88. All right. So that's all that was given. It's an ester. What do we know about an ester? All right. Just tell me which elements are present in an ester apart from oxygen and sorry, which elements are present in an ester? There are carbox and alcohol. Uh, Repeat. Oh, no. Then once the ester is produced, which elements are present in it apart from carbon and hydrogen? Oh, a ketone and a halogen. Hold on. So, this is a structure of an ester, right? So, this is your ester. This is the ester bond, right? I'm saying which elements are present other than carbon and hydrogen? 
Oxygen. Oxygen. Right. So for an ester, we have two oxygen, right? So bear that in mind. So how to get the formula of an ester? Let's do that now. So to get the molecular formula. And Esther. All right, so you're going to subtract the, the mass of oxygen from the molecular, from the molecular ion. All right, so the molecular ion is 88, oxygen is 32. That's 56. And then now 56 divided by 12. 12 4 is 48, right? So we'll get 4.5. Four point seven. Should I round it off? No, sir. no, sir. All right. So we have four carbons. All right. So our ester has four carbons. It's just so simple. You don't have to be there trying to figure it out. All right. Your yeah, ester has four carbons. Oh, so the questions now. It says. All right. Let me put the questions underneath it. the MZ of the molecular ion? 88. 88. That is correct. What's the MZ ratio of the base peak? 43. All right. Good. We know this by no right. 
what the formula for 15, 15 on any mass spectrum is. Yes, true. Right, so that's CH3. C 29 is always. C2H5. Wonderful. And 43 is always. C3H7. C3H7, right. Um, remember to put on our plus sign, all right? So plus, plus, plus. Let me see the questions. Right, correct. And then I said, no, the structural formula of compound X. So this was compound X, all right? So part four. Somebody's mic is on. Right, so the structural formula of compound X, you have four carbons, so you can play around with it to see which ester you want to form. Right, so I'm going to trace the, the mass spectrum and put the structure there. So if you haven't, if you did not dry it off as yet, just take a picture for me. So what year is this paper? It's not 2014? Yes, it is. 2014, and someone was saying it was in 2014. I think it's number five. So scroll down to number five. It's question five. All right, let me erase this now. So four carbons, I could choose to put two carbons there. All right. Make that my ester, right? Also, I could choose put one carbon over here or even three over here and put one over here, all right? So whichever one of those, and of course, Near hydrogens. All right. It says write the structural formula of an isomer possessing similar chemical properties. So if you are done, if you are done this as your compound, this would be the isomer. All right. It says write the structural formula of SMR possessing similar physical properties. All right. So you would not change it into like an alcohol or so. Just move up the ester band. If you did this, you could draw this as the isomer. If you did this, then up here would be the isomer. Also, C double band O. Or three carbons on this side. And right, so whichever ester draw, you would just rearrange it, right? And you get the isomer. Did we answer part four? All right, so part four, any of these is for part four. So part four and part five is the same. So look, let us say this was our answer for part four then this would be our answer for the, this one or this one, right? But we have these on the board, you know, would be an answer for part four. And then one of these would be for, for D. Yes, sir, I see it. They had asked you to name the ester. Remember, 
the ester, the, the acid part comes second, the up, but over here, that's the alcohol. This part is the acid. So it would be ethyl. If I know it. So for the alcohol, the anal comes off, you add YL. For the acid, IC comes off and you add it. So for this one, it would be methyl. They did not ask for the name, they could. So this one is methyl proper. Know it. And this one would be propyl methanoid. I'm going to work one last one and then close. Yeah. You want a you want a pass paper with the hydrocarbon? I'll show you how to do carboxylic acid. Carboxylic, sir. Carboxylic, sir. Carboxylic, sir. So I'm going to share the screen. Right, so I'm going to do it like how I did the L alkane. So I'm going to leave this blank for a second. Let us draw a carboxylic acid. So let us say we have this acid. Let me use four. One O O H. All right, so two oxygen, that's 32, four carbons, 48, two, eight. All right, so the mass of this molecule is 88. All right, so we would have a molecular ion. Let us say it fragments here. Would we'll get a mass now. So would we'll get a peak on this side, three carbons, a hydrocarbon fragment. That would be 43. By the way, all of these are now easy because the procedure is going to just repeat itself. All right. Other fragment on the right, it's two oxygen, a carbon, and one hydrogen. And that's 45. And break it. Here as well. If I break it here, I would get 29 on this side. And then I would get 32, 24. So it's 3, that's 59. And it's also of 1 for 59. We can have the usual 29. If I have 15 here, it means that I would have to break it here. In which case, let me see how much that is. Um, excuse me, sir. Yes, go ahead. In the exam, could they ask us to, um, would they give us one and then we'd have to draw it based on the formula that they give us? No, I haven't seen it like that. They give you the chart and ask you to figure out the 
compound and the fragments. Okay. Uh, yeah. Right, so 12 trees, 36, two oxygen. How much hydrogen is that? Five hydrogen. That's 73. All right. Let's move this. 73. And our next one, 88. All right. So let me trace the structure now of the carboxylic acid. Again, in the question, they will tell you that it's a carboxylic acid. All right, so the first thing I wanted to know, all right, so formula. And this goes for the carboxylic acid and the alcohol. All right, formula of COOH. The molecular formula. All right, so subtract. Subtract the mass of the COOH group from the molecular ion All right, so the molecular ion is 88. The COOH group has a mass of 45. So 88 minus 45, that is 43. Let me just label again. So this is your molecular ion. This here is the functional group. We are basically subtracting the mass of the functional group. So if it was an alcohol, you would subtract the mass of what? If it was alcohol, oh, you would right, you would subtract the mass of the OH group. Good. All right. So if 43 here, this is the mass of carbon plus hydrogen. By now, I'll know that 43 is always what? C387, sir. That is correct. So 43 is C3H7. Then it is attached now the functional group COOH. And that is your carboxylic acid. So you just subtract the mass of the functional group. Let me show you why I did that. So based on this, we have three carbons, right? Plus the carbon of the functional group. So the reason why I did it like that, if you take off the functional group, right? Then anything else is a fragment. So, Reason why I did not do it like the ester, just two oxygen. Ester was in the middle. This is at the end. So if I just subtract the mass of all of this, whatever is left is a fragment. All right. So that is why we subtract the mass of the functional group. So anything that is left that is a hydrocarbon fragment. So that's a simple and easy way to get your structure quickly. All right. So, right. So let me put it in the form of a question. So, one. Right. What is the MZ ratio for M plus peak? Eighty-eight. Right. Eighty-eight is correct. All right. MZ for the base peak. 43. All right. All right, quickly now. Once you say 15, we know that 15 is equal to? CH3. 
All right. Mz of 29 is equal to? C to H5. All right. And 43? C3, C3 A7. A7. All right. What did I tell you now? Once it's these numbers, once it's outside of the 57, the 71, and the 43, what should it tell us? What does it contain? An isotope? No, an isotope in this case. Uh, halogen. Like, like what you said, halogen. it don't have to be an halogen. It just means that it's not carbon and hydrogen only. All right? So remember now, 15, 29, 43, so hydrocarbon. All right, so anything outside of this, 15, 29, 43, 57, just keep on adding 14 and it goes on, right? Anything outside of these contains an element other than hydrogen and carbon. But since as we are doing a carboxylic acid, what would 45 tell us? 45, 59, 73. What would it contain? It has to contain what? It has to I contain see. the COOH group. It has to contain the oxygens, right? So any number you see outside of these ones here, it contain, if it was a halo alkane, it would contain the halogen. If it was an ester, it would contain oxygen. If it's an alcohol, it contains the OH group. Do you get the picture now? Sir, could you go over? Yes, sir. But, so on any mass spectrum, 15, 29, 43, 57, 71, 14 is how much? Let's keep on adding 14. 85. 85, All right. And just continue. So all of these will be CH groups. I'm saying no. When you look on this mass spectrum, after 43, there's a next number in the 40s, right? Which is 45. That is not a hydrocarbon fragment. Therefore, it must have in your oxygen atoms. So looking at the structure now, if you know it must have in oxygen, right? Two oxygen, this functional group is actually add up to 45. Because what I'm going to tell you to do, right? Let me see this. Oxygen. Right. What I'm going to tell you to do, once it's outside of your hydrocarbon fragment, Subtract the mass of your functional group. The mass of our functional group is 45. This fragment is 45. So 45 minus 45 that is zero. That means it just have in your functional group. The fragment for 45 just contains your functional group because the answer here is for the amount of carbon hydrogen fragment. So zero means you don't have any fragment. So COOH. So for the fragment 45, that's just the functional group. That means when it fragments here, you would get the 45. For 59 now, I'm going to do, just like I said, subtract the mass of the functional group from the fragment, All right? So when you are calculating fragment for your ala for the acid or the alcohol, subtract mass of functional group from mass of fragment, all right? Then you divide by 12. All right, so quickly, so 59, 
I'm just curious over this part. Anyway, if anybody want that, just take a picture and put it back quickly. All right, so if you want to take a picture, I'm going to erase it back. Right, so for 59, I would say 59, take away 45, and that would give me 14. I know that 14 is CH2. All right. But for procedure purpose. For procedure purposes. All right. Let's just follow the process. I would say 14 over 12, and I get one carbon. All right. I know it should be CH2. For 59, it is CH2, COOH, all right? That is 45, sorry, that is 59. All right, so work out 73 for me and tell me your fragment. You can text it if you want. Let me click over here. So will you be doing all the broad topics? Yes, I'm going to do a next two, two hour session tomorrow on chromatography, macromolecules, and Sunday a touch vape a touch solvent extraction and module tree. So tomorrow again at about eight. Yeah, I'm going to start late. Right. So I said at eight. Right. All right, so let me see if anybody takes my answer. All right, so somebody said C O H five C O O H. All right, remember it's seventy three. All right, so C two H five O. Let us check and see. What what? Because this, this is mass spectrometry, mass spectrometry. For the person asking on the channel. All right, so I see some answers. All right, so good, you are able to work it out. All right, so I'm going to clear up top and work it out. All right, so 73, so I should say 73 take away 45 again. That's the mass of the functional group. This is the mass of the fragment. How much I get I take away 45? 28. 28. All right. 28. Thank you. All right, so 28, that's our hydrocarbon fragment. So divide 28 by 12, we'll get two, all right? So two carbons, put on your hydrogens, and then you attach your functional group, COOH. So that would be C2H4, COOH. Remember to put on the positive sign as well, all right? So good job, everybody. No, not H5, H4, all right? When C2H, C2H5, C two H that is only when it's hydrocarbon, all right? Let me make a note, only hydrocarbon. You will have the C2H5.
And so that's that for today. I will post, there are two more past papers I saw with MassPEC. I will screenshot it and post it in the, in the community page of the channel. I will allow you to try it and post the answer later in the evening tomorrow. So I'm going to post two more past paper question on mass spectrum metric. You can try it and I will upload the answers after. Yes, same link tomorrow. All right, so I'm going to end it here. So have a good night, everybody. Yes, 8, 8 p.m. tomorrow again. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. You're the best. I'm going to stop. So if you would need a picture, just take a picture. All right, I'm going to stop the sharing and close it. All right. I will come everyone. All right. Good night.